Good evening and welcome back to the second season of House Calls. I'm your host, Kara Harris, and once again for the remainder of the hour, I encourage you to call your real estate questions into the show for your convenience. The number is listed at the bottom of the screen. You can also email those questions to housecalls at rogers.com this evening with a very, very exciting topic that we'll be discussing. We will be discussing the energy efficiency evaluation reports. We have a very special guest here. Not that you are not very special as well, uh, Mr. Chad and Fame, but you are a very familiar face. <laughs> I've been face. called special before. <laughs> I don't think it was a compliment, though. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're special, near and dear to house calls. Uh, Mr. Chad McBain is joined by Mr. Matt Vermeulen, a certified energy advisor with the Allura Environment Center. And before we went to break, you were just telling us a bit about uh, what the Allura Environment Center does and what you do as an advisor. You mentioned the Enner Guide for Houses. You've mentioned it quite a bit in your explanations, actually. Yes. Can you talk about what, what is that? Is that something that the Allura Center, uh, Environment uh, Center developed? Nope. Or? nope. Okay. It's, uh, it's a national program. Uh, people think of R2000. That's kind of a more common term people know of. Energy if they're star looking for, for homes, houses. they'll hear that term, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So it's a, it's a rating system that's been developed along with where you get EnerGuide for cars, EnerGuide for appliances, Energy Star for appliances, whatnot. It's a simply a rating system based off of uh, uh, criteria that's been collected over decades of research. And what does it measure? What does it rate? Uh, and the overall, we look at the house as a system. That's kind of the best way I can describe it. Where so, sorry to interrupt you. Your yeah. energy efficiency evaluation report is based on the EnerGuide guidelines? For houses rating system. Kay. Yeah, we Kay. use the software that is being used. Uh, they use it for the R2000 program as well. Kay. So we look at everything from your insulation levels in the basement to right up into the attic. We look at the orientation of your doors and your windows and the types that they are the heating system you have in your house, your ventilation system, what type of toilets do you have and your water usage, what type of dryer do you have and your stove. And, and so those are all combined to understand the footprint of your house, to get a, a picture of your house and be able to score it out of uh, 100. A footprint in terms of how much energy it uses. Uh, exactly, yeah. How many so tons how of greenhouse gas emissions are created by your house every year? Um, it's a value that we don't often think of. No. We think of it related to cars, yep. related to airplanes, but we ignore the fact that your houses are uh, responsible for most of the emissions on the planet, actually. <laughs> really? Our built environment is responsible for a little over 50% of all the energy used on the planet, yeah, for conditioning our houses and building our buildings, yeah. Wow. That's a lot. That that's I, I'm sh I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> by I'm sh I'm truly shocked by that number. That's very significant. Yeah. My my next question that's on the tip of my tongue, and I will try to not say this with any amount of anger, is why don't more people know that? I would <laughs> like to say it without anger as well. I don't know. We try our best to get it to people, but it's it's a really interesting when people come to their homes. And I've worked with many people on the design and the construction of their homes, and I work with contractors. And the starting point that people start at when they say, this is what I want and this is who I want to be, is often very different when that they end up as a real estate agent. Sure. You must no, see I it all absolutely. the time, right? Um, so yeah, uh, we're not sure what it is, some form of cognitive dissonance that they, <laughs> <laughs> they just start, they, they start with really good assumption and, 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 and a really good feeling. but. The things that they, that extra two bedrooms, yeah. the patio, the beautiful uh, patio doors that face directly north in our climate zone, of course, is. Yeah, well, and, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, the, uh, there was a statistics done in the U.S. in 2005 that showed that in 1990, the average home in the United States being built uh, was 1,500 square feet. And I was just going to ask. There was about uh, 2.8 people per family. And in 2005, the average new home being built was over 2,200 square mm -hmm. feet, and there was about 2.3 people per family. So there's less people occupying in more space, 50 yeah. percent yeah. more space. Which but doesn't we have home offices now, and the kids need a playroom, you know, and things like that. So I, the uh, the real estate mindset of most people is uh, on bigger homes, but not necessarily because of bigger families. It's just for other things. That what other things? In your opinion, from, from your perspective in the industry, what other things? Well, as a guy, I would say ego. Resale value? Uh, <laughs> no. Um, do you know, is uh, well, it a business decision? I, I, think, or is I, it think, I think part of it, realistically, is um, uh, because 
you know, our, 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 our cities, everything has become very urban and I think a lot of us want space and of course there's no land anymore really. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you can buy an acre and, and move in and uh, so now I think people stretch within four walls. So now I think they, they stretch in the urban environment. So you can't, you can't buy a big lot, but you can build, you know, you can build, I've a seen 4,000 square feet on homes on 30 foot lots. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So I think that's how people get that, that protective space between themselves and, and, and other people. But I also think, uh, look, going back 20 years, um, you know, we didn't, most of us didn't have a home office. Mm -hmm. I know I didn't, and, mm -hmm. and my father was a businessman his whole life, he didn't. And, you know, my kids enjoy things that I certainly didn't have, like a TV room or mm -hmm. something like that, or mm -hmm. a playroom and things like that. Like our lifestyles uh, have changed a lifestyles little bit. Lifestyles are And what's become yeah. important. Yeah. So to get back to the energy efficiency evaluation report, why, I mean, f other than obvious reasons of wanting to be environmentally mm -hmm. uh, responsible and, and act on uh, the knowledge that, that we have, mm -hmm. uh, why would a homeowner want to have this report done? Why would they want to pick up the phone and... Call you. The main goal is for, for us, as mm -hmm. our philosophy, is that it's, it's an objective analysis of your needs. Right? Whether you know it or not, it, it's, it's an objective analysis of your needs. Right? If um, A great example is uh, I once had a client who was getting condensation on the inside of their windows. It's mm -hmm. something typical that happens to lots of us. Uh, and we think it's a window problem. Right? The window's made of glass. I can see right through it. I must be losing heat out of my window, and I'm getting condensation on that window through the full assessment of the home, we would discover that it's a ventilation issue in his home, and we really needed to deal with that issue. So instead of re replacing every window in his house, mm -hmm. spending $14,000, he spent $1,800, and the problem went away. And what did he do? He put in a, what's called an HRV, or a heat recovery ventilator. And the reason it was so confusing to him is he'd lived in the house for 10 years and had never had this problem before, except over the last three years or so. Um, and what we discovered is that over the last 10 years, he's added six people to his family. Oh, he had six goodness. children, which means cooking for six, showering for, for six, six, body heat, body and heat yeah, yeah, course, transpiration, respiration. Course. And we discovered that the window issue just would have gotten worse. So it's targeting your dollars and doing the best with what you have. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I will uh, continue this very interesting conversation okay. on energy efficiency evaluation reports when we return after this very short break. Don't you go anywhere and get those questions ready. I have a ton. So we'll see you after this very short break. <laughs>